Uh, hi students, let's now solve the next question. Question number 23 from um, time cell material, module 7, oscillation chapter. It says a pendulum of mass m and length l is connected to a spring as shown in the figure. So, there is a pendulum like this, the length is l, and there is a spring connected to one end. It held H. Mass of the pendulum is M. Spring constant is K. So this is fixed Y second C. So now if the bob is displaced like displaced slightly from its mean position, so right now it is mean position. Okay, so tension balance is mg and the spring is neither stretched nor compressed. What would be the angular frequency once you displace it? So again, let us do this. So once you displace this pendulum here, see, by a small angle theta, this end would go a small distance, right? So that would be, this is H, it's a very small angle. So this displacement here of this end, which is connected to the spring, that would be your H times theta. Okay, so let's see what forces are acting on the pendulum when it is displaced by an angle theta. Okay, so here is your mg, here is t, okay, this length is m, and at this height head somewhere here, there will be a spring force this way, right? This is your h. Okay. This when it goes like this, this will be your edge and this will be your the whole length will be your n. See, if I do like this, the length of this doesn't change, right? So, the extension of the spring is how much if this end goes a little bit here, it travels a distance, actually it travels a distance uh, h into tan theta, but for small angles, theta is same as tan theta is same as theta g. In short, you can consider this as an arc. So the extension of the spring is h theta. So spring force will be what? K into extension, which is h theta. So these are the three forces on the theta. Now it is going to oscillate about this point. So let us calculate torque about that point. So this tension will not create any torque because it is passing through O mg stop will be mg into r perpendicular so this is your r perpendicular if you extend the line of force this will be r perpendicular same as this and this is l so this will be l sin theta <coughs> so this is the torque due to mg what about torque due to this force so this force is here this is the pivot so this is your r perpendicular this is h this is adjacent side so this will be your h cos theta so force is k h theta r perpendicular is h cos theta. What about the direction of these two torque? This will create torque this way. This force will also create torque this way about point O. So both are in the same direction. Okay, so you can add. Now again for small oscillations, theta will be small. So sine theta can be replaced by theta, cos theta can be replaced by 1. For small angles, cos of angle is 1. So your torque will be mg l theta plus k h square. You can take theta common. So that will be your torque. If that is your torque, then alpha will be what? Torque divided by moment of inertia. So let me divide by moment of inertia here itself. That will be your alpha. Now moment of inertia, the only object which has mass is the bob and it is going like this, right? It is going this way. So, moment of, uh, moment of inertia about this end will be for a single particle is mr square. So, distance of the particle from this axis of rotation is L. So, it will be M, L square. And from the equation of SHM, this quantity must be your omega square. So the question was to find angular frequency which will be root of this. Root of this matches with which option? Option 
B should be, but this M should not be here. No, it's correct. K okay, it's correct. So basically they have written this in the first term, this in the second term. So this is option B. Okay, so it's a simple problem. So the answer is option B, okay.